You know, if you're here to learn more about the new Ruger-made Marlin 1895 guide gun, you've come to the right place. Oh, yes. Hi, George here, and welcome to Tales from Target Suite, where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting, and we'll have an adventure or two that will make even a grown man smile. And wow, for a lot of us, this blued steel and wood-toned <laughs> Marlin 1895 is what we've been waiting on. And it is absolutely a beauty, and I'm going to give you a close look in a minute. But I think we need to shoot it again right now. But while I'm loading up, let me just tell you, we've got a few things in store. Number one, we're going to talk about uh, just the good looks of this gun. We're going to talk about the fit and finish and the function. And uh, we're going to bust that, um, that uh, big can of hominy down there. And I've got it constrained so that perhaps we'll launch hominy to the moon. We'll find out. But also, and you may already know this if you have bought either the Marlin Trapper, the Marlin SBL 1895s, of course, or this guide gun and read your manual. But I'm going to tell you what I think are the future plans for the 1895. So I hope you'll stick around for all of that. Now, let's put some more rounds downrange. Let's see if we can hit that tomato can down there. Well, I hit something. What a fantastic gun. I think it's time now to let this thing cool off a little bit and I'll give you a close up look. Well, I got to tell you, the metal to metal fit, the wood to metal fit on this Ruger made Marlin guide gun is just nothing but fantastic. And I'm loving the satin finish on the receiver and finger lever and the polished blue steel on the barrel and uh, magazine tube. What a nice contrast. Beautiful gun all the way around. Okay, I've got the 1895 Trapper out here because I wanted to do a little bit of a comparison between it and the 1895 guide gun. There they are side by side. And one thing we need to keep in mind if we're going to do any kind of a comparison is that this gun is $200 more expensive than this gun. And so there's something you get with the Trapper that you don't get with the, with the guide gun. 
One thing that I've thought about is that the inside of the loading gate is butter smooth on the trapper. And I think that's because they tumble deburred the, the receiver and it got rid of all of those sharp edges. On the guide gun, it's not bad. It's not like the shark jaws on Rossi that I recently had to, uh, had to work on, but it's, um, it's also not what I would call butter smooth. It's appropriate for this class of firearm though, I would say that. But another thing I was wondering is, will the unload feature work on the guide gun like it works on the, on the trapper? And the, the, the unload feature is that you just smash on that, pull out, pull out your rounds. Let's see if it works here on the guide gun as well. There you have it. Just like the Marlin Trapper, uh, just not quite as smooth, if I could say that. But again, this is a premium lever gun. This is a deluxe. Well, there's one other difference I want to talk about between this Marlin Trapper and this Marlin Guide Gun. But before I do, let me give you a little bit of information about myself. I retired in 2017 um, from Hewlett Packard first Compaq and then Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I was a uh, mechanical engineer, worked on a fantastic team of men and women, also mechanical engineers, and we designed some of the most complex um, enterprise class servers, storage and networking devices um, in the market. Um, I was really proud to work on that team. As part of our responsibilities, we of course had to design individual parts. We also had to design sub-assemblies and larger assemblies. And then we had to ensure that they were brought up to production standards before they got out to the uh, public. And that included, for me and many others, many trips to China. And what we found out, that no matter how many design reviews you went through, how many prototypes you made, how much testing you did, how much time you spent in China in the last days getting things to come together right, once the products got out into the public's hands, Things came to, um, we became aware of things that had not shown up in any of our testing. It's just the nature of the beast. And with that said, let me talk a little bit now about the difference between these two guns. First thing I want to do is we'll look at the Marlin, uh, the Marlin Trapper, and I'm going to give you a quick refresher on how the 1895 Model 336, how that system works. As I rotate the finger lever, the bolt is moved rearward, and then there is a bump on the back of the bolt right there, and that bump overcocks the hammer, ensuring that there is full engagement between the se full sear engagement between the hammer and the trigger. And then once the bolt continues rearward, then the hammer is returned to bat to its cocked position, and there is no and there is clearance, no touching between the hammer and the bolt. You can see a little bit of daylight through there. And that's the way it is on all of my Marlins. It was the way it was on my Henry X model. And then of course, as you close the bolt, there's a ramp on the front side of that bump that engages the hammer again on bolt closing, makes for a smooth transition, and then the bolt is closed. So that's the way it should work. That's, uh, that is the typical Marlin design. Now let's take a look at this guide gun and we'll go through the same process. We get to that point, the hammer is overcocked just as before, but then when the, when the bolt continues moving rearward, there is still pressure with the hammer pushing up on the bottom of the bolt. There's no clearance between the two like there was on the trapper. And so the hammer is dragging on the bottom of the bolt. And then as I close the bolt, the hammer actually pops up into the recess for the locking lug. And then instead of the, and then instead of the ramp on that bump being the first thing to engage with the hammer as the bolt closes, it's actually that sharp edge right there. And so there's a momentary hesitation and then it lets go and the hammer closes. 
And so I reached out to Ruger, I told them about the issue, and uh, since this is a gun on loan from Ruger, they said they would send me a new hammer right away that I could test, and I, but I needed to send this one back to them so that they can do their own internal investigation and take whatever steps are necessary. And so I'll give you guys and girls uh, an update on that when the time comes. And now I think it's appropriate that we uh, see about addressing that can of white hominy. Okay, the purpose of those cinder blocks around the outside of that can is to try to get most of the energy of that explosive force to go up and launch that hominy into one protracted period of rain. First of all, let's see if I can hit it without hitting the cinder block first. And I'm gonna put one shot on steel and see if where I am with these Federal premium loads. Here we go. <laughs> I think it worked. Well, that Federal 300 grain jacketed soft point out of this new Ruger made Marlin guide gun really made an impression on that can of hominy. Wow. But the gun also made an impression on me. It's just what uh, a lot of us have been waiting for, a blued, a blued gun with a wall with a uh, with a wood tone stock more traditional than the super short barrel stainless models i love my trapper but uh, this pushes more of my aesthetics buttons and the thing i described here with the hammer and the bolt engagement notwithstanding it is a fantastic gun and i look forward to getting that issue resolved and uh, gosh i'm really liking this gun what else can i say the Marlin 1895 guide gun. I probably have left out some details. I'm terrible at uh, traditional reviews, but um, did I say it weighs 7.4 pounds? I can't remember. But regardless, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Well, there it is on page 19. Talking about ammunition sizes. They list the 444 Marlin, the 4570, and look at that, the 450 Marlin. I don't know if it means that's what they're coming out with, but I suspect it does. And by the way, if you think I've looked a little peaked in the video, you are correct. 